and be glad in it. Amen. We're so grateful to be back out in the house of prayer one more time. The Lord has allowed us to be together one more time. Amen. Amen. And we're so grateful. We had a beautiful council this weekend. Amen. It was just beautiful. How many watched it or was here at the church to watch it? Amen. It was just beautiful. I thank God for the word that went forth last night. It was just beautiful, amen? And I don't know about y'all, but I pulled it to myself, amen? Amen. And it it, it just was a great help to my soul, amen? Amen. Thankful for both speakers. I enjoyed Evangelist Bowie, and I enjoyed uh, Pastor Cass. It was just beautiful, amen? Our praise team sang beautiful, amen? Our musicians did well. We just had a good time in the Lord. I would have enjoyed it more if we had been together, amen, amen. I think we would have had a great time in the Lord, amen. Right now, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. If there's anyone who has a spoken request, you can stand now and let it be known or simply by raising your hand. Remember Sister Priscilla in your prayers. Miss Harper. Amen. 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 Brother Phil, Deacon Phil. for Christian ministries as a whole, the body of Christ everywhere. Uh, Pray for man, woman, boy, and girl in all walks of life. Uh, Pray for our young people in the city that God will touch their minds and give them minds to be saved. Sister Shakar. Amen. Amen. Any other prayer requests? All right, then. We'll ask everyone to stand, and we'll have our bishop lead us in prayer. Let every heart pray, O gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, as we stand here in this holy place at this holy time, Lord, to give you thanks, to give you praise for what you have already done. Lord, we thank you and praise you for what you're doing for us in our lives, and we give you glory and honor for what you're yet to do. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy, which endures forever. We thank you for the grace 
We thank you for the blood of Jesus that purges us and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We thank you, Lord, for being our way maker, for being our strong tower, for being our provider. We thank you, Lord, because we can come boldly to the throne of grace, that we can obtain mercy to find grace to help us in our time of need. We need your help. We need your deliverance. We need your power. Hallelujah. We invite you in, oh God. Hallelujah. To do what you do best. Hallelujah. To make ways where it seemed to be none. We do you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every request that's been made known to you. We ask you, Lord, that you move by your grace and move by your power and heal those that are sick, those that are going through in their bodies, Lord, to grant victory in the name of Jesus. We need victory, Lord. We need your help. We need to praise you. We need to thank you. We need to call on your name. Hey, hallelujah, bring down every stronghold and every high thing that wants to exalt itself against thy knowledge. Lord, bind the adversary on every hand in the name of Jesus that's trying to disrupt our praise, that's trying to disrupt our worship, that's trying to disrupt our service with you, O oh God. We ask you, that you lead us, that you guide us. That you help us, oh God. Hey, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Revive our hearts. Revive our soul. Revive our minds. In the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you put a hedge of protection about us. Protect us from dangers seen and unseen. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, hallelujah, let your presence dwell with us. Hey, that you manifest it in this place. Hallelujah, through your miracles, through your signs, and through your wonders. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that you save us on this hour. Hallelujah, baptize souls in your name. Fill with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Send forth a word, Lord, that makes preaching easy. Hey, hallelujah. We need to hear from you, Lord. We need to hear from you, Lord. As the deer panteth after the water brook, so panteth our soul after thee, O oh God. Uh, we won't be satisfied until we wake in your likeness. We won't be satisfied, hallelujah, until we have thy mind, until we have thy spirit. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, feed us. Hey, feed us, O oh God. Strengthen us. Strengthen us, O oh God. Hallelujah. Lead us and guide us. Father, we thank you. Hey, hallelujah. We praise you, Lord, in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless us to have fellowship one with another, that we love one another, ah, that we stick together, hallelujah, with one another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah Lord, we pray. We pray this blessing in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on and give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Anytime we pray to the Lord, we ought to praise him after. Anytime he blesses us, we ought to praise him after. Anytime we look to him, oh, we ought to praise him. Hallelujah, glory. Hallelujah, give God thanks. Give God thanks. Give God thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give God thanks. Thank you, Lord. For making ways where it seemed to be now. For being our encourager. He's our encourager. He's our encourager. He encourages us. Hey, hallelujah. As they say, there's something down on the inside that's telling us to go ahead. Hallelujah. Give him one more praise as we turn it back over to Pastor hey, Lois Duck.
turn to the 34th division of Psalms. It reads as thus, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were ashamed, were enlightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. Verse 8 says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Praise him. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It's praise and worship time in the sanctuary. Amen. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. He's good, isn't he? Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're good, Father. You have been good to us, Jesus. And we're here for you, Father, only you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice yeah. How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God And all will see how great How great is our God, yeah, yeah. How great is our God, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see, how great is our God. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? Is our God. And all will see. And all will see how great. How great. How great is our God? Is our God. Yeah. You have the name above all names. You're the name above all names. And you are worthy. Worthy of all praise In my heart and my heart will sing How great is our God, is our God. Yeah. You have the name above all names You're the name above all names And you are worthy You are worthy of all praise In my heart In my heart Mighty, 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 mighty
worship you father in spirit and in truth we thank you father thank you jesus thank you for just being with us father thank you for your presence father we thank you jesus thank you lord thank you jesus and i've been changed Go back to the way it used to 
to be before your presence came and changed me. I won't go back. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. I'm never going back. I'm never going back. No, never, never going back to the way it was. I'm never, never going back. I'm never going back. You changed my whole life. Never going back. No, to the way. Before your presence came and changed me. Say, I won't, I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be. Before your presence came and changed me. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Going back is not an option. Amen. Amen. It's time to move forward now. It's time to hold on now. Amen. It's time to get close to the Lord now. It's time to draw near to Him. Amen. And ask Him to create in you. Amen. Create whatever you need to create in me, Lord. Just create in me. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank our praise team. Let's give our praise team a hand. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We're going to bring forth our announcements. I uh, didn't receive any announcements from anyone, but just like to give the hours of our service. Sunday schools on Sunday morning at 930. Amen. And then we have service at 11 o'clock. Bible classes on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Amen. And we'd like to just welcome all our Facebook friends and our members out to those services. Amen. Like to let you know that you're welcome to worship with us at any time. Amen. Uh, we here at Christian Ministries have a statement of purpose. is to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ through effective, responsible ministry and intentional, creative, dynamic fellowship. Uh, our vision statement is we are, to, we are to be a caring fellowship, leading souls to Jesus Christ, strengthening members, families, making disciples, equipping them for service and community ministry. Our core values are we value love, we value persistence, we value patience, we value commitment, we value sacrifice, we value service, and we value you. Amen? Amen. Amen. And at this time, I'd like to welcome all of our guests and friends, amen. I'd like to let you know that you're welcome here at Christian Ministries, amen? Amen. amen. All right, at this time, we're going to ask everyone to get their morning's offering ready, amen? Your tithes and your offering, amen. We know we can't beat God giving, so we're going we're gonna to try, though, anyway, amen? Because we're going to bless the Lord according to how he has blessed us, amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't get all of it. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that you'll bless this offering. Bless those that give. Bless those that don't have to give. Lord, bless it for the building up of Christian ministries, Lord. And help us, Lord, to lift up and magnify your name, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, cause us, Lord, compel us, Lord, to do what's right. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 
Amen. You can also give electronically your tithes and offerings through tithely. Amen. Amen. Tithely. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. If it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I'd be without you. If it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I'd be without you. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. If it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I'd be without you. If it wasn't for, if it wasn't for your love, wasn't if for, it wasn't for your grace, I don't know, I don't know where I'd be without you. Amen. Thank God for his grace. Amen. Amen. He said no matter what you're going through, no matter what's happening around you, his grace is sufficient. Amen. So praise God for his grace this morning. Amen? Amen. At this time, without further ado, we're going to bring before you our bishop, and he's going to bring forth the morning's message. Let's receive our bishop with a hearty amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. We certainly do give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. And as I often say, that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And we ought to enter in his gates with thanksgiving and enter in his courts with praise. Thank you, Lord. We certainly do thank God for our lovely wife, Tracy Quinn, First Lady. We thank God for her, Pastor Duck, Mother Louise. We thank God for our media team. They did an excellent job over this weekend. Amen. An outstanding job. Things that they've never done before. Amen. And we certainly do thank God. But what they have done, we can also continue to use uh, as we move forward in this virtual space during these particular times. I'll be glad when this is over, though, and when you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And we certainly do thank God for our ushers, and we praise God for you. Amen. For you pressing your way, being out on this morning, and also, uh, also for those that are listening to us virtually, we thank God for you as well. And it looks like we are ahead of schedule, so, you know, I ain't going to try to uh, hold us any longer than what we need to be. So um, we thank God for the word, and we're going to get into the word of God even as we speak, even on this hour. Amen. Truly, God is good to us. Amen. Isn't God good to you? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I heard a song that said, if you know that God is good to you, say yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. He saved our soul. He made us whole. If God has been good to you, you ought to say yes. Thank you, Lord. So we praise. Even, even my tablet here, Siri, is jumping up and down. <laughs> Hallelujah. She, <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We certainly do praise God. Uh, I want to invite your attention uh, to the book of Ephesians. Um, I do want to read two passages of scripture there, uh, Ephesians 1, 18 and 1, 19. Thank you, Lord. And the Lord just uh, dropped that particular, uh, another verse upon our heart. Uh, so I want, uh, you know, it's time to prepare for that. 
But let us stand to our feet as we begin to go before the Lord. We praise God even for our praise and our worship team. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And we thank uh, and praise the Lord for Sister Lorna and her husband and the children coming in. Amen. Uh, so what's your last name now? We thank God for the Moss family. Amen. Amen. I had the pleasure of meeting them. Uh, uh, well, I ain't going to say a few weeks back, probably a month and a half back or something like that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Beautiful family. We thank God that you're here. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, as we get ready uh, to go before the Lord, let us pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, as we stand here in this sacred hour behind this sacred desk, Lord, we thank you for your word on this evening, this morning. We thank you. Uh, that you are gracious to us and patient with us. And we ask you, Lord, that we receive it with meekness that to the saving of our soul, that it feeds our heart, that it feeds our mind in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus. Send forth an anointing that makes preaching easy. Let the church say amen. Amen in Jesus' name. And out of the book of Ephesians, chapter number 1 and verse 18, We've been teaching out of this particular scripture for the past couple weeks. Uh, and it's a scripture that just keeps on giving. It says, the eyes of, our, of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. In verse 19, it says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power. I want to read verse 18 again. It says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And I want to focus in on that verse 18 that tells us that uh, having the eyes, Paul had made a prayer concerning that which we are about to endeavor into. He said, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to know what is the hope of his calling, the hope of his calling. And that's our subject on this morning, the hope of his calling. And when we begin to look at the scriptures and begin to understand what we know about God. There's one thing that God wants you to know about him, that God took great care. He took great care and consideration concerning our salvation. He took great care and consideration concerning our salvation where we were a priority in the eyes of God. Before he brought anything into existence, God had us in his mind. And I want you to understand that, that God had you in his mind, that you are a priority with God. And the Bible says that God literally, he foreknew us, meaning that he was in a relationship with us even before we were born, before we were brought into existence, God foreknew us. Your parents started loving you when you were conceived in the belly or in the womb. God started loving you way before then. Hallelujah. He loved you way before then. Before you were even brought into existence, the Bible says that God knew us. And then having known us, the scripture says that he literally predestinated us. In other words, he 
predetermined the course or the pathways of our life. He predestinated us to be conformed to the image of his son. He had a plan for us that we should be like little Jesuses here upon this earth. Y'all remember in the book of Genesis wherein God himself said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And the scripture says that in the image and in the likeness of God made he them, male and female created he them. Uh, God in his wisdom and taking great care and great plan for us, the Bible says that he pre, 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 literally predetermined, he predetermined our boundaries of our habitation. In other words, he did it according to his own dispensation. The, that means God's time. He, he determined when you should be born. He determined where you should be living. He determined in his own mind the, where you should be right now in him, in Christ Jesus. In other words, God, it's not of you and it's not of your own will that you're born in this era. It's not uh, of your own happenstance or it's not because of luck that you are here at this season and at this time. Paul put it plainly. He said, in him we live and, and in him we move and in him we have our being. So it is God that determined the era or the year or the time that you should be living because it is God's plan. It is God's purpose. And he predetermined that to be our habitations. And when we get further into our knowledge and our understanding, the Bible says that those he did predestinate, he called. And those whom God called, the Bible says, he justified. And those whom he justified, he glorified. In other words, then because of God's plan and he predestinated us, he called us through the gospel of Jesus Christ. When you heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, that was God calling you because he predestinated you. Uh, and when you received the call uh, and you accepted the call, you were justified, meaning that you were justified or declared righteous in Christ Jesus. Jesus, that you were washed by the blood of the Lamb. And, and God, God in his infinite plan and in his infinite wisdom, when he justified you, the Bible said that he also glorified you. Hallelujah, that with God, you're already in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. With God, he's already sanctified you and, oh my God, and declared that you should be holy uh, without blame before him in love. In other words, God has already blessed you, my God, with spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. God has already given you everything that you need, my God, that pertains unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God made ways for you even before you even knew that there was a way. God opened doors for you even when you thought every door was shut. God, he opened the door. God made plans. And the Bible says that every temptation uh, there is not uh, a temptation that should overtake us, but God has made a way of escape. It's already done. Hallelujah. It's God is not just making a way. God has already made a way of escape so that you can bear everything that comes upon your life. So that you can be able to endure hardness as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. That, so that whatever you experience in your life, you're able to give God glory. Then you're able to give God praise because he's the one that has already secured your salvation. Hallelujah. God has already, my God, made ways for your redemption uh, through the blood of Jesus. As we often say, what can wash my sins away? 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. You, you've already got forgiveness of sins. Not that we are looking to make sin happen in our lives, but we've got to understand that God has already forgiven you. Uh, for every sin that you can possibly commit. God, my God in heaven, somebody clap their hands in this place. Hallelujah, because we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And God has taken the worst sin, hallelujah, that you could ever commit in your life. And he's forgiven you. Uh, he's forgiven you. He's wiped it off the books when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He's a God of a second chance. He's a God of a third chance. The Bible says when the righteous fall, Huh. Hallelujah. They get back up. They can fall seven times and they can get back up. Hallelujah. I venture to say you can fall 177 times with God. You can get back up. Uh, it's because of God's goodness. It's because of God's grace. It's because of God's power. It's because of God's anointing. My friend, we've got to understand that, that though God has given what we need in this time, that, that God has made provision for us. Come on and clap your hands and give God a praise for the provision. My God, because we have to understand that because God took great care, because God had us in his mind, he took great care for our salvation through Jesus Christ, that he literally wants us to benefit uh, from what he has done. And that is the hope of God's calling. The hope of God's calling is that you would benefit Hallelujah from what he has done. My God, my God, when when my wife makes a meal and they puts the meal on the table, my God, it looks good. It it smells good, but that's not going to help me. That's not going to benefit me until I actually sit down and eat it. Unless I sit down and receive it, that's where the benefit comes in. That's when I receive the nutrients. That's when I receive the caloric intake. That's when I receive the protein. That's when I receive the strength in that meal. And it's the same way with God. When God, before the foundation of the world, he sent you his word. Not that should you should just know his word. Not just to that you should understand his word but he sent his word so that you can receive his word and once you receive his word you receive the benefit hallelujah of the power that's in the word of God that's why that word if you receive it it's able to build you up uh, and gives you that inheritance uh, among them that are sanctified. That's why God said that we should hunger and that we should thirst after righteousness. And he said, then when you do that, you shall be filled. That's why he said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Uh, who am I talking to today? It's not enough that you know the word. It's not enough that you understand the word, but you've got to receive it uh, so that you can obey it. Hallelujah. In the time of trouble. My God, the Bible says that faith, it cometh by hearing and that by the word of God. Those of you that want to believe God, those of you that want to walk by faith and not by sight. You've got to get into the word and receive it. Hallelujah. So that you can have the faith that you need. Oh, my God, to be able to do all that God has ordained for you to do. And that's the benefit. My God, somebody say benefit. Hallelujah. That's the benefit of what God wants you to receive after all that he has done. Uh, let us bring our minds back into focus. 
my God, because I want you to understand that God has done great and marvelous things for you. As Paul said it in one of his epistles, he said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, uh, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Uh, he said, be not conformed, but be ye by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So what Paul was saying when he said, I beseech you there for brethren. Uh, hallelujah. He said that, I believe it was in the 12th chapter. Hallelujah. And when he was beseeching them, uh, he was telling them uh, that I need you to take advantage uh, of what I said from chapter 1 uh, up to this point. Uh, uh, that's what he was begging them. Uh, that's why he was beseeching them. Uh, uh, because of what God has already done. We've got to understand that God wants us to take advantage of what he's already done. Oh my God, God did it way back when before you even brought into existence. When did he do it? He did it before the foundation of the world. When did he do it? Before he said, let there be light. God has already measured in the balance. Oh, and waited in his hand all that you need that pertains to life and godliness. That's why we should have it in our minds that we cannot fail with God. With God on our side, we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. That's why we should stand fat footed and be bold in our walk and say, Nothing shall separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. We should have a praise on the inside that says, No weapon formed against us shall prosper based on what God has done based on what God has already done for us through Christ Jesus and you know sometimes brothers and sisters and sisters and brothers we have a hard time understanding what God has literally done for us and that's not your fault because the Bible says that it had been hidden it had been hidden before the uh, God brought things things into existence but he has made them known unto us that's why Paul in this epistle in Ephesians chapter 1 he begins to pray he begins to say Lord I pray a prayer that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened well Paul prayed and he prayed that the eyes of our understanding I might be enlightened uh, that we ourselves would be able to receive uh, the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation into the knowledge of his will. So what Paul was saying, he was saying when you receive the Holy Ghost, that the Holy Ghost would bring you wisdom, that the Holy Ghost would bring you revelation into the knowledge of the will of God. Uh, he was saying that God needs to open up your understanding about Jesus Christ. Christ, uh, about the lily of the valley, uh, about the bright and morning star. Uh, God needs to open up your understanding, uh, not only of the Lamb of God, uh, but the King of Kings uh, and the Lord of Lords, uh, that he needs up, up your understanding uh, and help you to understand that Jesus is uh, the bomb in Gilead uh, that he is your healer, uh, that he is your deliverer uh, that he is your hiding place uh, that he is your peace, uh, that he is your shelter uh, in the time of the storm uh, that he is your very present help uh, in the time of trouble, uh, that he he is your guy. 
God. He's your leader. He's your banner. He's your Jehovah Jireh. He's your Jehovah Nisi. He's your Jehovah Shalom. He's your Jehovah Tzikhanu. Hallelujah. He's your banner that you should praise your God. He's your strength that when you are strengthless, you understand that the grace of God that has appeared unto all men has taught us that we should deny ungodliness and worldly lust and live soberly and righteously down here in this present world. He has revealed, oh my God, he has revealed that Christ in you is the hope of glory. He has revealed in you that if the his spirit uh, be in you that raised Christ from the dead. Uh, it shall also uh, quicken your mortal body. Uh, God wants you to understand uh, that God uh, through Jesus Christ uh, who sits on the throne uh, in heavenly places uh, has ascended up on high and led everything captive uh, that would captivate you. Oh, you need to praise them. You need to give them glory. You need to magnify the God of your salvation. That's why he said he wants the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened. He wants you to be educated in the doctrines of Jesus Christ. So when the weapon comes against you, it won't prosper so that you can and declare and decree uh, that if God be for me uh, who then can be against me uh, and this joy that I have uh, the world didn't give it uh, and the world can't take it away uh, I trust uh, in Jesus uh, I trust uh, in the Lord uh, no weapon uh, no empty, uh, no adversary uh, no demon uh, can stop your praise uh, can stop Stop your worship because your worship was ordained by God. Your praise was ordained by God. So nothing, oh, somebody say nothing, nothing can hold back your praise and your worship in the Lord. Come on and clap your hands and give God, give God a praise. Oh my God, I feel an anointing in here. I feel some breakthrough in this place. If you just clap your hands and praise your God, I'm coming to my conclusion. I'm coming to the climax of this message. Oh, Shabba. Oh my God, I feel a praise in the atmosphere. I feel glory. It's in the atmosphere. You need to reach up and grab it. Reach up and grab it. Just reach up and grab it. Just reach up and grab your breakthrough. Reach up and grab your deliverance. Because the God that you serve, he never slumbers. Neither does he sleep. Come on and praise him. 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 Praise him in this atmosphere. Oh, beloved, this the God. God wants to open up your understanding so that your understanding could be enlightened. God wants you to be enlightened about what he has done for you and he wants you to benefit that's the hope of his calling he wants you to that's the hope of his calling and when we think about the hope of his calling Jesus said it on this wise he said the light of the body is the eye 
uh, and the eye uh, be single. Uh, uh, he's saying if the eye uh, be focused, uh, how great uh, is that light uh, uh, in the body? Uh, if you uh, just keep your focus uh, on Jesus, you'll have the light of the world because Jesus he's that true light that light of every man every boy and girl that cometh into the world you gotta be enlightened by the word of God that was made flesh and dwelt among us and if you get close you'll be able to see his glory you'll be able to see beauty you'll be able to see his majesty you'll be able to see his power if you unto the Lord he'll reveal himself to you as he revealed himself to John on the Isle of Patmos as he revealed himself to you and I the day we received the precious gift of the Holy Ghost I never shall forget that day when Jesus washed sins away you ought to clap your hands and give God a praise because God he wants you to take advantage of his hope what hope of Jesus Christ he is the hope of glory God wants you to take advantage that you can be made perfect that you can be made whole in Jesus Christ it is God's hope because God is confident in his savior his only begotten son God is confident in what has done for you as he has laid the foundation he's opened up the way he's made a way for you to be set free he's made a way for you to be delivered when he called you oh my god I feel like preaching when he called you by the gospel of Jesus Christ which is the power of God the salvation and when you heard that gospel and you repented of all your sins God said this is the hope of my calling that you would receive my grace my unmerited favor that you would receive my mercy my limited forgiveness that you will receive my peace my tranquility oh my God he gives you the peace that passes all understanding and this is what God hopes for that you can have that power somebody say power somebody say power God said in his word that you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you so that you can walk out your soul salvation with fear and trembling so that you can be secure in God in Christ Jesus so that you can be the praise of his glory so that you can be the worshiper of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, so what are you saying, brother pastor? Uh, I'm saying that God, uh, he doesn't want you uh, to worry about this. Uh, he doesn't want you uh, to worry about that. Uh, God wants you to praise him. Uh, God wants you to worship him. Uh, God wants you to call on him. Uh, God does not want you uh, to worry about the devil uh, because the devil is defeated uh, and God is exalted uh, and Jesus Christ uh, he is Lord uh, what God wants you to do uh, he wants you to keep on uh, keeping on uh, he wants you to take advantage uh, of what he has provided uh, so you don't have to wait till the battle is over uh, you 
can shout right now when the enemy comes up against you like a flood. God has already preordained that the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against them. God wants you to know that he is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. God wants you to know and understand that there is nothing that can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. That's his hope. That's the hope of his calling, that you would take full advantage of his mercy, full advantage of his grace, that you would take full advantage of that peace that passes all understanding, that keeps your heart, that keeps your mind. That has to be revealed to you. Come on and give God a praise. Eyes have not seen. <laughs> Tell you, David, I have not seen. Hey, no ears have heard what God has prepared for them that love him. But the Bible says that he has revealed it to us. It has to be a revelation. Uh, you have to pray. Lord, you reveal it to me. Reveal what your hope is. Reveal it to me the power uh, that you wrought in Christ when you raised him up from the dead and set him above principality and power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The hope that is in you. God expects that you look at every test and every trial that you look at it and say, by any means necessary, Hallelujah. By any means necessary. Hallelujah. That whatever comes up against me, by any means necessary, I'm more than a conqueror. You got to say in your heart, because of what God has provided for you, that nothing shall destroy us. Nothing shall uh, uh, wreck us. If God be for you, who then can be against you? Come on and clap your hands and give God a praise. Hey, Shabbat. Hallelujah. If there's one here today that realizes that, Lord, I want to know your power. I want to know your anointing. Hallelujah. Let the church stand. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Come on. It won't work. No weapon. Come on. Formed against me shall prosper. Yes, Lord. It won't work. Come on, worship him. I know God, God will do. He'll what do it. He said he will do. He will stand, stand. by his words. He will come through. God will do. God will do it. He said he will do. What he said he, he gonna will do. will stand by his word. Hallelujah. And he, he will, will come, come through. No weapon. Because God formed it. against me. That nothing formed against shall you. Shall prosper. That's the hope of God's calling that you may realize it that. It won't work. That it won't work. No weapon. Nothing. Formed against that the me enemy could throw your way. Shall prosper. Hallelujah. It won't work. I know. Let us pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, as we stand here in your presence, Lord, we thank you for the anointing. We thank you for the power. We thank you for this word on today. Lord, we realize that the hope of your calling is in Jesus Christ, that we might benefit from what he teaches. We might benefit from who he is. We might benefit from the power that resides in him. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you reveal it unto us. 
that we can walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we've been called. Help us, even in our prayer lives, to know that when we call on the Lord, hallelujah, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous runneth in, and they are saved. Father, we thank you for this word on today. We ask you, Lord, that you allow it to find lodging in the hearts of these thy great people. And, Lord, we pray, Lord, for those that are hearing on, on this hour, hallelujah, in our virtual spaces, we pray, Lord, that you send forth an anointing, send forth some glory, send forth some power. In the name of Jesus, send it on down. Lord, save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. The only wise God, to him be glory both now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Just fist bump your brother or sister. Let them know, amen, that God is good. Amen.